Welcome back to another episode of LA Fish Guys. The long-awaited LED retrofit is about to take place um, up here above the tank. Let's see, come on in here, Jimbo. So in here, you can see the old wooden light rack. We built this back in 97 when I built the tank into the house. Um, it served me well for many, many years, but it's time for a facelift. Uh, what we're gonna do, we've already removed the metal halide reflectors. Um, first thing to do is gonna be to cut this puppy out of here. I need to go run and grab my little cable snips so we can snip the cables. And I'm gonna take my wonderful sawzall and attempt to cut this thing out without hacking up my walls. We've already got a tarp tape down here uh, that'll help keep dust and garbage out of the fish tank. Um, so next step, cut cables and saw it out. Be right back. really couldn't have come at a better time. These cables have served me well for a long time, but a couple of these things are obviously on their last legs, so um, this is long overdue. Welcome back to LA Fish Guys as we help Scott remove his old lighting system so that we can install the new system. Hopefully the cable's out of the way. Now we're gonna make some noise and a mess. We have to use a saw to get the old one out. Don't try this at home. As with all power tools, make it a point to take safety into consideration. Wear protective gear, in particular, protective eyewear. It's like Christmas. So these little lights that I'm tinkering with, way back in the day when I decided I wanted moonlight, I used these old blue party bulbs on a timer. It's a nice effect, but modern stuff is LED, so that's what we've got now. Now, just in case you're wondering why the heck he's cutting this thing up, well, the reason I'm cutting it up is because it went in uh, before we actually had the walls in here. So it went in in one piece. Now, when you get to work within the confines of these doors, and in order to get it out, it's got to come out in pieces. Incidentally, the new light rack, it's going to come in in pieces. Officially, there's no turning back. The light rack is hacked. Jim, can I hand you this? Now, the only thing we've got to hope for is that these fit out the door. This obviously is a serious consideration. Which Lucky for me, they do. Because the alternative would be the light rack would have to be cut into even smaller pieces. And the same thing applies to the other half of the light rack passing through the other door. Oh, all right, no more light rack. It's time to get to the fun stuff. Uh, we're switching out all these pulleys, so I guess while I'm up here, next thing I'm gonna do is remove, hopefully remove, the old ones. Yes been long enough they're not just going to come out without a fight so I'm going to need to go get a wrench pull those things out and then the next thing we're going to do after we get these things out is we're going to cut some FRP which is fiberglass reinforced plastic nice white material that I'll put on the walls that will run from the ceiling or from these studs down to the bottom of the tank or the top of the tank it'll give me a good place to run a bead of silicone around to keep water from seeping out onto the glass of the tank when we spill up here It'll also clean it up and make it look nice. Uh, no doubt it's going to be a little bit of a fun project because I've got some holes that I'm going to need to notch out for. Got a little fan hole up there that draws hot air out of the tank or out of the uh, light soffit as I call it. Um, so I've got to cut out a hole for that and then I'm going to have to make some notches for the places that the cables and wiring go. So that'll be next. Um, I guess we're probably about ready to start cutting FRP, but before I do that, I'm gonna take these pieces of wood out of here. 
had these in here originally as a light stop. We'll revisit these a little bit later. Watch out for the nails. Um, we'll use those to rest the new light rack on while I set it all up. So along with all the uh, electronic wizardry and gadgets comes the inevitable kind of snarl of power cords and devices all over the place. And now, this is the winch that was in here and we're going to replace this with something different and we've had to kind of evacuate some of the equipment out of here just simply to gain access inside here. The winch is actually going to remain for now. The winch will go away later. Uh, we're going to continue to use that winch, but uh, what we need to do is get to the pulleys up on top. I'm going to use different pulleys. Uh, so I need to get a ladder or something in there, which is going to be next to impossible, but we'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, there, there is the plan. Eventually that winch will come out, just not today. Hello, my name's Jim Stein. I'm with MyFishTank.com. I'd like to take and show you the advantages of a clear for life acrylic aquarium. Here's the first difference on a glass versus acrylic aquarium. Glass aquariums have these thick silicone seams in their corners. They use silicone to hold those glass panels together and that seam becomes pretty obvious. An acrylic tank, on the other hand, has a rounded front corner, which means its sides plus its front panel are all one continuous sheet of acrylic, and they are rounded or bent front corners. So there is no seam to be seen. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. What you doing? I'm trying to make a template for my holes. It's really ain't gonna be a fun part. Scott plans to line the inside of the upper cabinet area above the top of his big 500 gallon aquarium with a product referred to as FRP, fiberglass reinforced plastic. Essentially, it's plastic sheets that'll attach over the drywall and help minimize the amount of moisture that's contained or condenses on the inside of the cabinet area. To make sure that all of those panels fit properly, we need to cut out holes and notches to accommodate the vent hole as well as the hole that the power or pulleys pass through. It'll be easier to do this on a paper template now, transfer that information over to the FRP at a later time. It's much easier to trace it now than it would be to use a ruler and measure out where it should go in the future. So the old pulleys came from these little latches. The new pulleys are quite a bit bigger. And one of the issue I'm gonna face is that if I have it hanging, the bottom of the pulley or the top of the pulley where the cables come through would be lower than my gussets or my, my kind of bulkheads as I'll call them, I guess, through the walls. So I'm gonna have to remove these little eye bolts here and try to open them up so they can just drop the pulley on the eye bolt itself and get away from these little latches. So a little bit of tedious work. The old pulley used four, or the old rack used four cables. The new one, because of the additional lights in the middle and the weight they create and the bow that they create on the light rack, um, I have to add more winch cables to give it support in the middle. So I'm going to need to go get more of these little eye bolts. There's always the need to have to run down to the hardware store for just something more. And some sort of a tool to get these things out so I don't drive myself nuts. You use a uh, straight edge screwdriver. Yeah, actually, you know what? see that little wrench down there with Phillips head too? Why don't you hand me both? So while Scott wrestles with removing the old pulleys and eye loops, 
and we plan out another trip to the local hardware store to get some more parts that we miscalculated on. Make it a point to come on back for part three as we take out the old metal halide lighting system above Scott's 500 gallon reef tank and retrofit or install the new LED lighting system along with the new light rack.